welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our wood grain background hot foil plate. So let's go ahead and check it out. So I've taken out my hot foil machine. This happens to be a Spellbinders Glimmer machine. And you can see there I've plugged it in and turned it on and I have my green platform ready light. So I can lay my wood grain background plate on there and press that timer button and you'll see that green light is flashing, it takes about a minute or so. And once it's solid, you are ready to start the hot foiling process. So here we're gonna take a piece of foil, this is a beautiful copper, and we're gonna place that face down onto that beautiful wood grain pattern. Then we're gonna take our paper and put that down, and then this machine comes with these two spacer plates, and we're gonna lay that on top of our paper, foil, and plate, just like this. Then we're gonna take this whole piece here, we're gonna pop it out of the base, and we're gonna run it through our die cut machine. And I'm just gonna do that off camera since my machine's way over to the side there. So we ran it through the machine, and now we can see the magic. So we're gonna lift up our paper here, and then you can peel that foil off, and oh my goodness, this is my favorite part. Look how gorgeous this is. It's just so shiny and beautiful, and I love the classic wood grain pattern so much. Now, if you've never hot foiled before, we have an intro to hot foil plates video that has a ton of tips and tricks, and we're going to link that in the description below if you want to check that out. So now that we have some beautiful copper wood grain on some white cardstock, we're going to try out something a little bit different. So we're repeating the same thing. Our platform ready with light was on. We added our plate. We pressed the timer button. It flashed for a minute. It's now solid and we can start adding some foil. So this time we have this beautiful kind of like shimmery gold. We're going to put that uh, face down onto our hot foil plate. Then we're gonna take our paper. In this case, we're gonna use a dark brown cardstock, which is just gonna be stunning. And then we're gonna add the two spacer plates that are included with this hot foil machine. Then we can take that whole piece off of the base and off camera, we're gonna run it through our die cut machine, just like that, just in that little sandwich. We've run it through the die cut machine and now the big reveal. So we're gonna lift up our paper and then we can peel off this and look how stunning that is. Oh, oh my gosh, oh, I just love it. I think I'm gonna have to put wood grain hot foil on every single card I make now. Now here's a comparison of the different looks you can get with it depending on what foil you use and what paper you use, which is really, really awesome. Next, I'm gonna take out the largest stitched rectangle die and I'm gonna die cut both of these patterns so that they're ready to place on a card. And now you can see just how beautiful these are. They work great in both portrait and landscape depending on what design you're trying to do for your card. And that's what we are gonna do next. We're gonna create a really cute Valentine's Day card. So we're gonna take out some classic Valentine's dies here. So this is some guava cardstock and we're gonna take out the largest of our lacy heart stackables, which is so cute. And we're gonna die cut there. That has a beautiful lacy detail. And then we're gonna take the outside in stitched heart stackables and we're gonna die cut the largest one of those out of some white cardstock. And you'll see that these two layer perfectly. Now, the other really cool thing is that we have a brand new die coming out with this release that's called the Giant Outline Love You Die. And that die actually coordinates with these older previous dies. So here we have our double-sided adhesive sheets. This is one of my favorite things. So I'm gonna take out a sheet of that and we're gonna take a little piece of paper here, some ballet slippers cardstock. And I'm just gonna take some scissors here and we're gonna trim down this double-sided adhesive sheet to be the same size as this piece of cardstock. And this is gonna help us layer the die cuts. You'll see what we're gonna do in just a second. So now we can peel off one side of the double-sided adhesive sheet and we're gonna layer that right onto the cardstock. And this is effectively creating a cardstock sticker. Then we're gonna take out that new die. So this is the giant outlined love you die and I am in love with this die so much and we're gonna die cut that. And now we have a beautiful cardstock die cut that has adhesive on the back because of those double-sided adhesive sheets. So now we can work on layering all these pieces. So we're gonna layer that white heart onto the lacy heart. And then we're gonna be able to layer that outlined love ya on top of that. And because we use the double-sided adhesive sheet, all you need to do is just peel back that sheet and you can layer it on just like a sticker. And you'll see that it is a perfect match for these two previous dies. Now you can use the giant outline love ya on its own too, but I love that it works with some previous dies. It just makes those dies brand new again, which is so awesome. 
So now we're going to add the circle there to the center of the O. And so we're going to use the interior piece kind of as a little placeholder so that we can get that center in the exact right place. And then we'll do the same thing for the A. So we're going to use the A as kind of like a little placeholder there. And then we can just drop in the center of the A and then it'll be in perfect placement. Now the interior of those letters, I'm going to save those for a different project later. But for this time, I want to do a bunch of different shades of pink. And so this is some of our textured cardstock, which comes in these gorgeous shades of colors. And so we're going to die cut this giant outline, Love Ya, out of all of these different shades of red. The cool thing is, is I'm going to save all of the frames and use those on cards later. And I can save the different interior pieces too. So once you die cut a bunch of these, you could make a ton of cards, which is really great for mass production. And I think it looks so cute to have the different shades of red and pink in the letters. So we're just adding some liquid glue with the glue tube into each letter. And then we're just layering each letter and the hearts and exclamation point in. And look how cute that is. Ugh, I am just in love with this. Next up, we're going to take out one of those hot foil backgrounds that we created earlier. And this is the one with the white and the copper foil. And it's just so gorgeous and just such a great background. So we're going to add some tape runner to the back of this heart and layer that on. And honestly, this card could be done. I mean, it is just so cute, just like this, especially with that hot foil. But I couldn't help myself. I had to bring out the Would You Be Mine characters because they're so much fun. So we went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut these adorable little beavers. We're going to add a foam square to the back of those and then we can layer them on each side of the heart, which is really cute. And I love this design because I love that you could do it with a lot of different critters too, but oh my goodness, are the beavers perfect with that hot foil wood grain in the background. Now those are some accessories that are included in the Would You Be Mine stamp set. So there's the cute little handmade card that this guy can hold. And then we have that little hair bow that the other one is going to wear. And oh my goodness, this is just looking so cute, so fun and simple and fun to do. And because you have all of those other frames, you could continue this design with those extra pieces that you die cut. So we're going to add that onto a standard size card base. And now this beautiful card is done. It's so stunning. And there's something about that wood grain hot foil that just makes it so special. Next up, Shari has another gorgeous hot foil card. So take it away, Shari. I've already colored and cut out my images for today's card. I'm using the little mini So Damn Much set. But for my background, I'm using the new wood grain background hot foil plate. Now this is so pretty on this craft and I am going to show you the colors I used and how I did this. I'm going to start by making a little hinge for my paper so that I know that it lines up where I want it to and I don't have to worry about lining things up when the foil is going to be bigger than my paper or my plate. So I'm just using a little piece of washi tape and I'm actually just going to line up the two sides here. Not quite exact, but now I have this little hinge. So I know that my cardstock is going to hinge back into the same spot. Then I can take the foil that I want to use. And for this, I am using the hot foil. The color is Aura, A-U-R-A, -A, and it is so pretty. It is like a warm, iridescent color. And on this craft, it just looks lovely. So I am going to take this and cut a piece that is bigger than my foil plate and I'm just carefully trimming that with my scissors and then I am going to put this between my plate and my cardstock. Now I want to make sure I have it right. You want the pretty side to face the foil plate so that the not pretty side adheres to the cardstock. So you can see I had it wrong and flipped it to the correct way. So you could also stack this cardstock first, foil with the pretty side up, and then the plate. But since it goes with the plate side down, this is the way I'm doing it. Now I have my glimmer machine here. It is plugged in, but the platform is not quite ready. Once that green light that says my platform is ready, I can lay this sandwich onto my base. You don't have to wait for the plate to be ready to add the foil and the cardstock. Once it's ready, once that second light has stopped blinking, I've just added a piece of paper just to keep things clean and the two plates that come with the Glimmer platform. 
Then I pull the whole thing off and run it through my Spellbinders machine. And I like to run it back and forth twice to make sure I have a lot of pressure onto that plate and that that foil adheres. So now I can pull off those two plates, take this off my plate, being very careful. You can see I'm putting it on that rubber mat up there because it's still hot. And then when I pull the foil back, you get this lovely foiled wood grain. It is just so pretty. Now I'm taking the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles to cut my panel down so that when I put this on a card base, I'll have a little bit of a border around it. I'm also taking some dough ink and a blending brush and just adding a little bit of dark brown ink to the edges. Now this will not cover up the foil, it will resist the ink, but you can see how that just defines the edges a little bit and gives this panel a little more interest. It actually makes that foil stand out even more, I think, where that ink gets added. You can see where it gets a little darker, that that foil really stands out on that background. And I'm just inking all the way around this panel because you're going to see this whole thing. And once I have it inked the way I want it, I am just adding it to a vanilla malt or cream colored card base. So this cream colored border is going to frame it up nicely. Next, I have a lacy heart. This is the medium sized one cut from some ballet slippers cardstock. And I'm just doing the same technique where I'm inking the edges up with some peachy keen ink. And this will just kind of define those edges and that stitching a little bit and give it some interest instead of just being solid pink. Now you can see there how this card's starting to shape up. But for my sentiment, I'm using the sentiment from that mini set that says, I love you so damn much. And I'm stamping this on some guava cardstock. I've not cut my sentiment banner yet because I am going to use it to make a shorter banner. So you can see how I've lined it up kind of with that text left justified. I've run it through my die cut machine and then I'm going to line it up again because it will kind of snap into place against those cut lines. And then I can just cut the tail on the right side. And then I've made a custom length banner to fit the length of my sentiment. I'm using some foam squares on the back of these cute little hugging beavers. And I'll just add that to the center of my heart. And once I have them in place, I'm also going to grab that little tiny stamp in this set that says hugs in a very small font. And I thought it would be fun to just stamp that right above my little beavers that are hugging. I've put some foam squares on the back of my sentiment banner and on the back of my heart. And I'm just figuring out the placement of these pieces. I'll go ahead and stick that heart down kind of towards the top. And then I'll stick my sentiment banner down below that. I am sticking it a little bit lower than I probably would do normally, but that's because I'm going to add some cattails to the top of it. So I have three cattails. This is also from that stamp set. And then I'm just going to trim off the bottom of a couple of them so that I have some different height cattails. And you could just tuck it further down behind the banner, but the foam squares were kind of in my way. So it's just easier just to trim the bottoms off because you're never going to see them anyway. Once I have them kind of looking the way I want in their placement and their heights, I can use some liquid glue to adhere them down. And I just love kind of the fun look that this adds just a little bit extra to that sentiment banner at the bottom. I also have three of the little hearts from this set. And once I figured out where I wanted those to go, I'm just adding those with a little bit of liquid glue as well. I had a hard time figuring out where exactly I wanted them to be, but I ended up just kind of filling in around those beavers inside that heart. And then of course, nothing is complete without a little more shimmer. This looks great with that foil in the background as well. So I added it to the hearts, to the cattails, and of course that little heart in the sentiment. And then here is my finished card. I love that foiled wood grain. I just think it is so pretty and adds so much to this simple card. 
This card is so stunning, Shari, and I love how you ink blended the edges of the hot foil too. It looks stunning. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this card by Kara is so sweet. I love the heart-shaped cutout that she has in the center of the wood grain. This card by Callie is so clever because she used the hot foil wood grain onto the build a cabin die set, which gives it such a cool texture. Elise was so creative and she used the hot foil plate for embossing. So she used one of the embossing mats in her die cut machine to create this gorgeous impression. And isn't that so beautiful? I just can't wait to try it. I just love this shaker card by Grace and how she has that beautiful wood grain on the white cardstock. It's stunning. And this card by Mindy is so beautiful. I love the gold wood grain on the dark brown cardstock. It really pops. Letitia used a reverse foiling technique to create this beautiful shiny masterpiece. I love the red and gold together. And then Yanea created the most beautiful treat bags for these gorgeous cookies. And I love the hot foil on it. It makes it feel so special. So we cannot wait to see all of your wood grain hot foil projects. So make sure to share it with them with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.